from historic Fenway Park here in Boston. The show has an AL East matchup. It's the Baltimore Orioles and the Boston Red Sox. First pitch coming at you right after the break. Just about ready to go. And on the mound in this one, Tanner Howe. It's got that splitter, and it's a pitch that swings and misses. Calm fast, and they come often. Very difficult to pick up out of his hand. And into the box for Baltimore, Gunnar Henderson. So ready to roll here in Fenway. On the ground to Devers. And a quick out number one. Time now to take a look at the Orioles lineup put together by manager Brandon Hyde. A really frustrating showing for them in their last game. Lots of traffic on the bases, but they left a ton of runners on base. Couldn't cash in their chances, Chris. They had plenty of chances. There's nobody to blame it on but themselves offensively. They just did a poor job converting in those situations. You have to figure out what's your plan going to be. Maybe watch some tape from the last game. Make the adjustments. So if you get those opportunities in this one, you've got a much better chance of scoring some runs. One down, base is empty. Wouldn't Get chase that time. The pitch. Hard hit, left side. Slings to first. Rutschman retired. Fastball groove right down the middle. Usually a lot of damage done with that pitch. A hard grounder, but he wanted to get that ball in the air. Maybe drive it into the gap. Here's Ryan Mountcastle. And a foul ball. Two outs, bases empty. Way get a pop up foul out of play off to the right side. That'll find the stands. A wind in the pitch. And now one and two. One, two. Foul ball left side. He'll see another. Right back to him on the mound. And the Orioles set down in order. We head to the bottom of the first. No score after a half inning. Back here at Fenway Park, our starting pitcher in this one, Dean Kremer. Well, this guy featuring that straight four seam fastball, but off of it throws the cutter and really he's most effective when he's using that cutter off the four seam fastball just to miss the barrel of the bat. Not always going to see the swings and misses, but if you can somehow get weaker contact, you have a chance to collect some outs. Now, it's going to look the same until the very last second, so hitters are going to have to make a decision and hope that sometimes they're able to guess right. And the pitch. Balls. So a runner aboard to start the inning. Hitting is really easy for some guys. One thing that I can see already, his bat stays in the zone on plane for an extended period of time. And guys like that, they have a high contact rate and they have more barrels because of that bat being on plane. And even when you don't get it great, it's still hit hard enough to dunk something in like that in front of the center fielder. Rafael Devers in the box now. No balls in a strike. Yeah, and here's a fun stat on Davers. He's at his best when he's hitting homers and doubles, and by the time he was 26 years old, Devers already no, had over 150 did, home runs and more than 200 doubles. He's just the 15th player in baseball history with those kinds of numbers at that age. And the pitch. Fouls one off out of play back to our left.
kicks and deals. Gets a piece and it stays 0 2. Left hand batter waits on the ground right side into the outfield base hit lead runner touches second headed for third he's in there back to back singles just one of those seen eye that base hits funny. through the infield and just kind of rolled over on it a little bit sometimes those can find a hole and get you a knock. here's Tyler O'Neill. I'm liking the power he's shown recently. Three homers already in this series. Pitch oh. misses inside. Ball one. Singy, maybe some nerves getting the best of him in the first? Well, it's hard to know exactly if it's nerves or not, but he just doesn't have it right now. Those hitters on the other side, they're going to say it's nerves and use that as a competitive edge to try to jump on him even more. And ball. another ball. 2-0. No outs. Runners at first and third. Flips the corner. Two and two now. Great spot to be in right here for the pitcher. We can either strike this guy out or get a ground ball double play. Next pitch misses inside. And a full count now. Tristan Casas on deck for Boston. Payoff pitch. Fouled off again. And it remains three and two. I think ultimately you want to tie him up, get the ball in on the plate so that he can't get the barrel to it and hit it to the outfield. The pitch. He fouls it off. We'll do it again. Foul. We'll see another payoff pitch. Well, he's having a tough time getting a pitch by him as a hitter. You feel pretty confident that you're seeing different pitches still able to make some type of contact. That one is absolutely belted. One runs in, and it hits off the monster. Around third. He'll score as well. And they take a two-run lead. Nice at bat right there. Not just the result, but also seeing a lot of pitches. Made him really work out there on the mound. That's about as textbook as it gets. Got his stride load out of the way early. He stayed inside that ball and squared it up out front. Man, that was like he was in the cage hitting off a tee. Now batting Tristan Casas. And the first pitch up. misses for ball one. Runner takes off. Pitch in for a strike. McCann fires. Safe. Stolen base. When a guy's got that kind of lead at second base, somebody's got to call timeout. Pitcher's got to step off. The catcher's got to ask the young for time or something. You can't let him get out that far when you don't have a good thrower behind the plate. He's going to steal third almost standing up. That's a really good job of being aggressive by the base runner. Ball to strike. The pitch. Yeah. There's a strike. And the right hater deals. Fouls it off, still one and two. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And that's the first out. Well, that's always the key to effective pitching is getting ahead in the count. And as a pitcher, it really allows you to start expanding the zone. Hitters become defensive, and all of a sudden that plate starts to get really wide. And what happens is because of the pressure, you end up committing to a pitch as a batter before you recognize what it is, and that's what leads to the strikeout. Now here is Masataka Yoshida. Red Sox already leading. <laughs> 
One and two. In the dirt. And an excellent job keeping it right there. Pitch two misses. And two. two and two. And the righty deals. Got him swinging for the strikeout. Couldn't catch up to the heater. Here's the second baseman. And that no, one that just hits. misses. That's a ball and no strikes. One ball, well, lots one of strike. pitches thrown in this first inning. And it's kind of that nightmare scenario for starting pitching. But you know what? It's still early enough. He can settle in. He can get some length if he just cleans up his mechanics a little bit. Swing and a tapper. In plenty of time to first. That ends the inning and stops things from getting out of hand. But they'll pick up a couple runs here, both coming on this two-run double. And it's two-zip. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Back here in Boston, top of the second, Anthony Santander at the plate. Well, after scoring runs, this is where you're looking for that shutdown inning. Get that hot team back in there to swing the bats. Yeah, the right hander back to work. Santander, 29 years old, and he was a second round pick back in 2016. And yeah, that's outside. outside. One ball, one strike. Time to check on our umpires. Earl Hendricks calling balls and strikes. Yeah, well liked umpire Boog. Pretty consistent with his zone. So if you're familiar with him and how he works, you won't get too surprised by anything. Sometimes he'll give a little bit off the corner, but nothing too crazy at all. Devers throws across the diamond. Leadoff man retired here in the second. The third baseman, Jordan Westberg. And stepping in is the speedy Jordan Westberg. First pitch just misses. 1 0. Right through there for a strike. Red Sox leading it by two here at the top of the second. And the slider just misses. Line to second, snagged on the bounce. Whips it to Casas. Fine play in the hole for the out. Batting six, the left fielder, Austin. Two Hayes. outs, base is empty. And now it's Austin Hayes. Kind of a throwback. No batting gloves. Oh, that's yeah. in there. And that's strike one. Outside. Two down, nobody on. Foul ball still, a one and two count. Right hander kicks, deals. And that one is lifted in the air. Brings it in, and that is that. Three up, three down for him there. We go to the bottom of inning number two. It's the Red Sox two, and the Orioles nothing. Back now at Fenway, bottom of the Boy, second. No and now, Will your Abreu. The right-hander back to work. And yeah. immediately pumps in a strike to the left-handed hitter. Oh, one. Just oh. missed. Saying he wasn't very sharp in the first, got hit around a little bit, just wasn't able to locate particularly well. A lot of stuff for the fat part of the plate. Yeah, Boogie wasn't fooling anyone. It's a tough place to be. 
because it's not always obvious where adjustments need to be made. Sometimes it's location. Sometimes it's being too predictable. Sometimes you're tipping your pitches. He's going to need to figure it out quickly, though. Once you get the ball by the pitcher, there's a lot of base hits up the middle, even on ground balls. So a nice job to use that big hole and get himself a hit. And now they've got some speed on first, so we'll see if they try to get him into motion. in the air left field Hayes puts it away batting none not shortstop David Hamilton. David Hamilton up next for the Red Sox just oh. missed Always tough to turn two on a speedster like this. It's even harder with him coming out of the left-handed batter's box. You really need something to hit hard on the ground that they can handle to turn two quickly. And a pitch. And That's that down. one That's is in the dirt. Now 2-0. and oh. Chris, with that distraction and a speedy guy at first, he's in a favorable hitter's count. Well, if nothing else, I mean, this is a great spot for a hitter to be in. Right through there for a strike. pitch line drive and it gets down for a base hit lead runner around second and they'll have runners at the corners after a one out single well they call that an advantage count for a reason you're so much more likely to get something you can handle nice line drive to the pull side right there but he didn't spin off of it that's the key you still have to extend through the baseball in order to hit a line drive like that so the Red Sox lineup turns over now batting Jaron Duran. Close, ball. but called a ball. Ball one. Red Sox by two. Bottom half of inning number two. Check on the runner. Oh, Hamilton hey. gets back easily. Base runner with a one-way lead right there. All he's trying to do is get a look at the pitcher's move. Had no intent of stealing on that pitch. No, that's out. Just missed. Good spot for the hitter. Definitely has the advantage in this count with runners on. Look for him to be aggressive on this next pitch. Two on, one out. That right. one finds the zone. Now two, two balls and a strike. And here it comes. The two Three on one. is high. And that one wrapped foul. A little early on that fastball. I'm sure the pitcher taking a note. Look for an off-speed pitch on this next one. Righty to the plate. Swing and a miss. Had him out front for the strikeout. And Chris, that's a way to neutralize his speed by keeping him off base. And the defense breathes a sigh of relief because he puts pressure on everyone if he can put the ball in play. But that's how you do it. Keep him off balance. Get him out of there and deal with the next guy. Devers now singled and scored his first time. Kremer picks oh, over back in there standing. Just no missed. One out. In yeah. for a strike. And the count even at one. Well, I know they've gotten out to an early lead, but you don't want to take these opportunities for granted. With two outs, still lock in with a quality at bat. Drive in that run. You may not have another runner in scoring position the rest of this ballgame. Just oh. off the outside corner. Two and two. It's a good take. Yeah. 
The next oh. offering misses, and the count is filled up. Full he count. should get a pretty good pitch to hit here with three-hole hitter coming up if he's walked. Two on, two outs. Swing and a foul ball at the plate. They'll do it again. Good plate That's appearance there. Able to take the walk. Well, the stage has been set for this offense, Boo. It's all about creating opportunities, and this is one of them right here. And with two down, the Red Sox. The early lead, Tyler O'Neill up next for the Red Sox. First pitch misses. Missing low. Pressure's on right here. 2 0 count. Base is loaded. You don't want to fall to a three ball count and then walk in or on. He's got to challenge the hitter right here. Two outs. And a foul ball. Makes the count two and one. And fouled off. Kicks and fires. Foul ball, another 2 2 upcoming. And that one lifted in the air, center field. Mullins settles under it. Drops into the glove. And that is the third out of the inning. Red Sox leave them loaded, but they hold the 2 0 lead. Back inside Fenway Park, top half of the third the inning, and now the center Cedric. fielder, Cedric Mullins. Mullins. Hauk back to work. Yeah. There's a strike. 0 oh 1. A little bit no, low. No, that's low. Ball. The 1 1. Ripped to third and caught. Yikes, that ball was scorched, an absolute missile, and it almost becomes self-defense as the fielder when one of those things comes screaming towards you. Watch your lips. Here is James McCann. In there for strike one. Get going one. Big swing and a miss. Oh, two. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. Well, that pitch wasn't even close to being a strike, and that just goes to show you how defensive hitters can become when they're up against an 0-2 count. You're just hoping for a mistake somewhere near the zone that you can get the bat to, but right there, he was clearly anxious. He was swinging when the ball left the hand. Jorge Mateo stands in now and watches strike one. The Red Sox leading by two. We're here in the top half of inning number three. Hey. Swing and a miss, and he struck him out. And good work there as he gets a one, two, three. Nothing doing this time around for the O's. They trail things here, two nothing. Bottom of the inning, and here's the first the baseman, Tristan Casas. The first baseman, Tristan. The wind of the pitch. Now, Chris, through the Dude, early that's stages, that's he hasn't been very efficient in One terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. That one called a strike. And the count one and one. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, 
doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. Pace hit. Man aboard on the leadoff single. Now batting. Left fielder. Masataka. Masataka Yoshida now at the plate. He was a strikeout victim his first time. That yeah. one finds the zone, and that is strike one. Thinking about Yoshida, he's never going to be the biggest player when he's on the field, but that doesn't mean he can't hit. He gets on base and doesn't strike out very often. That combo makes you a valuable asset to your club. Here comes the 0-1. And there's the strike. Oh, this guy's so comfortable hitting with two strikes. Even a good pitch early in the at-bat. If he's not ready to pull the trigger, he's not worried if he gets to an 0-2 count. And he deals. Swings through it for the K. Pulled the string on the changeup. You know, variant speeds can be just as useful for a pitcher as movement. As you see right there, it really wasn't a great location. But the fact that the velocity change had the hitter off balance, and that's all you got to do sometimes. Now it's the second baseman. Grounded out his first time. That one no, misses, that miss. and it's 1-0. 1-0. Oh. Oh. Man, at first, one away. Oh, yeah. Next offering is in for a strike. Runner on the goal. Swing and a miss. McCann fires. Caught stealing. Not a fast runner on the base pass, so this kind of looks like it was a hit and run call from the dugout. Got to make contact some way or somehow because that guy's not going to be able to steal second base and be safe. Two down, nobody on. And another ball. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Two outs. Gets a piece and stays alive. That one the other way. Gets down, base hit. So he gets a hit after a long battle with the pitcher. Just one of those at-bats you almost hate to see now come to an end. Right Pretty much a model swing right on that one as he ripped it into the opposite oh, field gap. Right and you. I'm sure he's going to be watching that one back on video because that's the kind of swing you want to bottle. So many positives that led to that knock. And now, will your Abreu. That misses. And that is ball one. And a pitch. Just oh. missed. That, that one is, misses. And it's 3 0. 3 0. Yeah. And there's the automatic. And ball four to a board. Boom. Do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at-bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. McGuire in the box with two gone. And takes a look at a called strike. 
flips the corner. And that is strike two. And a bat like this is almost over as it begins. In this situation, you have no idea what the next pitch is going to be. You just got to hope that you can make contact. Left-hand batter waits. Just off the inside corner. And the count is one and two. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left stranded. Three innings complete. It's the Red Sox two and the Orioles nothing. Start of the fourth, and now it's going to be Gunnar Henderson. Gunnar. The pitch. Ouch, that one drilled him. No chance for a play, and let's hope the righty's not hurt on the mound. And now they'll hustle out to check on him. That was quite a shot he took as you see him down on the knee. Yeah, clearly in some real pain, but he will not want to come out of this game if he doesn't have to. It's looking to me like he's going to try to shake it off and continue. Here's Adley Rutschman. 0 for 1 so far. And there's a foul ball. You know, these Orioles, as this game goes on, have to be more disciplined at the plate. So many of their outs have come from weak contact on pitches. They're chasing outside of the strike zone. You can't do oh, much of anything it. with those locations, and that's been true again today. The pitch. On the ground, could be two. Slings to second. Relay to first, double play. I think four, six, three double plays like that are way tougher than these guys make it look sometimes because no matter how you do it, the feed from the second baseman is a tough one. That's where footwork really comes into play, but right there, very well done. Ryan Mountcastle will hit next. 0 for 1, he grounded out in his first at bat. Foul ball. And as a pitcher, when the hitters are swinging at everything, you feel no need to challenge inside the zone. You just keep working the corners and expanding that strike zone and beyond, and they just keep eating right out of your hand. And that skips in the dirt. And a swing and a miss. And it's a three up, three down inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and no one left. On now to the bottom of the fourth. It's the Red Sox two and the Orioles nothing. Back here at Fenway, John Chabi and Chris Singleton with you. And leading off the bottom of the fourth, David Hamilton. The wind of the pitch. There's a strike. Anything in particular stand out to you as far as moments at Fenway Park? Wow. You know, it's unfortunate because I remember as an Oakland A's player, we were up in the series against the Red Sox, two games to none. All we needed to do was close out a Saturday night ball game. We went extra innings. The Red Sox won that ball game. And then Sunday, they pushed the series by winning game four back to Oakland for game five. And unfortunately, they won game five as well. The one, two. On oh, the ground to third. Slides for the stop to first. Pretty nice play there. Well, he didn't recognize changeup earlier enough. Got out in front a little bit, rolled over on it, and beat it into the ground. That was 2003, and the Red Sox would eventually get their hearts broken by Aaron Boone, but end the curse a year later. This one popped up. Westberg should have this one. Puts it away for the out. Two down. Now batting third baseman, Raphael Devers. And here is Devers. Devers, the baby-faced assassin. 
he's a guy who does it all with the lack of contact in today's game this guy hits for contact so he delivers average but there's on base and slugging too in the first well, pitch misses it. for ball one early in the count you have to be real careful because of that power but then if this hitter gets a strike or two on him he's still two very comfortable and because he has the ability to get the barrel to the baseball he's a threat deep into the count as well two down nobody on pitch that misses missed, there the and now three and oh three and oh Ground ball right side, and that one handled. Fires over to first. And Devers is set down. Red Sox go one, two, three. Nothing doing for Boston. They're up two nothing. We go to the top of the fifth. Now it's the switch hitting outfielder, Anthony Santander. Santander. As he turns on the rubber and with that good live arm delivers. Oh, that's down. Pitch misses. One and oh. Whoa. That's a slider for a strike. Here comes a pitch. Just Don't off the fall. outside edge. Two and Whoa. one. That one oh. missed. Now in this three ball count down in the ball game you've got to be very selective take your walk if they'll give it to you. The three one. And there's ball that's four. Low. All four. Take your base. That could jump start an offense that's really struggled to score in this one. You don't want to wake a team up with the free pass. Now the third baseman Jordan Westberg grounded out his first time. And the pitch a little bit low. Ball one. One ball, no strike. The Red Sox up by two. And we're at the top of the fifth. So two That's balls ball. and no strikes. Can't oh. find it here. That's six straight balls. Three and oh. Here's a 3 0. And a four That's pitch a walk. Score. Runner take your base. Well, interesting. He went with the off speed and yeah. walked the hitter. Man, you got to challenge the guy with the fastball. Okay. Now the left fielder, Austin Hayes. He's 0 for 1. Another oh. miss. Eight straight outside the strike zone. Two walks in the inning already, and he just doesn't seem comfortable out there. Like he can find the right mechanics and then repeat them. And the 1 0. And that one fouled off. And a pitch. And a count one and two. First and second here, no outs. Fights that one away, still one and two. And a pitch. And that one hit to first, and it gets by him. Just a simple ground ball the other way that had eyes on it, man. Sometimes that's all you need to do. Just let the ball travel, put the ball in the play, and just hope it finds a hole. Bases loaded, nobody out. So next to hit for Baltimore, Cedric Mullins. No, that First is, that's pitch, and he just misses. Bases juiced, no outs. 
And no. another ball. They need a strikeout, and you need a ball perhaps on the ground for a double play or get yourself a pop up, something, but you've got to make some pitches. But if he can battle and get through this, he can earn some points. Line drive, makes the catch, one down. That swing right there tells me he's seeing the ball pretty well. I know it didn't produce a hit, but he made solid contact, and that's all you're looking to do anytime you're at the plate. James McCann in now. Golden opportunity right here. And this is a big opportunity for him to pick up his teammate right here. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. Swing and a miss. And it's 0-2. Man, that's just a nasty splitter. Bottom falls out of it. You don't see a lot of guys throw that these days, but I tell you what, he's got a good one. At the belt and fires. Not one, close two. with that one. One and two to count. Base is loaded. One away. Swing and a pop-up. And the infield fly is called. The batter number three, second baseman, Jorge Mateo. Jorge Mateo now. He struck out swinging at his first at bat. Breaking ball through there for a strike. Fought off foul. That's foul off to the right side. Keeps the A.B. going. Two outs. Foul ball. It stays nothing in two. Kicks and deals. Two outs. Bases are full. Next oh. offering is down low. Swings and misses. Struck him out. He continues to roll on the mound as five shutout innings are in the books. It's the Red Sox two and the Orioles nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning. Here now the Red Sox DH. Tyler O'Neill. And the right hander back to work. And first offering is fouled off. So Boog, you went to college in this town. What was it like for you being a college student and having the opportunity to bounce over here to Fenway Park and see some oh. games? Yeah, in fact, 1990, a couple of college classmates and I, we were in college. We bought standing room tickets, and then the next night got a chance to see the Red Sox clinch the East against the White Sox in that sliding catch in the corner by Tom Brodansky. The Red Sox would end up losing to the Oakland A's in the playoffs, but that's one of the things that I'll think about in terms of memories from going to college and going to Fenway. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Really good swing right there. You got a pitch that he knew he could handle allowed himself to stay back just a tad bit longer and he hit the ball on the screws so man aboard and next will be the cleanup hitter Tristan Casas this isn't a pitcher that softens up when he starts to show signs of fatigue I mean his stuff stays sharp makes these at bats more difficult than they normally would be against other pitchers at this stage of the game Swinging a foul straight back. You know, these Red Sox, digging into their numbers, have to be happy with the swings they're taking. We've seen how many line drive base hits they've been able to produce in this one. Six to be exact, and they've all been pretty loud. That one's in there, and a count is 
Left hand hitter waits. Hard ground ball, base down. Throw back in quickly. First and second now with nobody out. Now back. No left fielder. Here comes the skipper, and we're going to see a pitching change in this spot. Dean Kremer will depart. Two-run ball game as he heads for the dugout, and we'll be back with a new pitcher. So a new arm out of the bullpen for the Orioles, Tyler Wells. Still pretty early in the ball game, so this bullpen has some work ahead of them. Best case scenario might be if he can come in here and get several quick outs, kind of bridge the gap that starter left for him. Here's the left fielder, Masataka Yoshida, who's 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. Here's the pitch. Both runners on the move. Hard grounder into the outfield for a knock. They extend their lead as the runner scores from second. It's 3 zip. Just so sound in his mechanics. Hits against a firm front side. And the hands just continue to carry through the middle of the field. Here's the second baseman. One for two. Strike right, one. Smart. No balls. One strike. No outs. Runners at first and second. Next offering is foul back. And the right hander deals. Right. Caught on and missed. Struck him out. And now one away. Gosh, here it is. Hit it. Three pitch now strikeout. Right. All right. fastballs. Man, he's got a lot of confidence in that pitch right now. Right Now it's the right fielder, Willier Abreu. And yeah, that's in there for strike one. Not the easiest oh, thing one. when you're talking about a guy that's, you know, perhaps is going to be in the rotation, you know, maybe a long relief guy to not start an inning, to come into an inning with pressure on it and, and try to get yourself comfortable. Fouled off. He was late. Pitch is in the two. dirt, and yeah, the count one and two. Runners at first and second with one gone. Last half of inning number five. Ah, Swings and three. misses. Two out. Oh, really went aggressive in with that slider. Good two-strike oh, pitch right there. Right. At worst-case scenario, okay. it's weak contact in play. Exactly where he and the catcher wanted it. So first and second with two outs. And here's the catcher, Reese McGuire. Little chopper rolls foul. The pitch. Bounding ball here. Rolls foul. Two outs. Couple of base runners at first and second. The next pitch misses. And that's ball one. Wouldn't chase that time. It misses. It's a strikeout. But the RBI single pushes across a run. It's now 3 0. You're dialed into the show. Back in Boston, and now Gunnar Henderson. The shortstop. Gunnar Henderson. Hauk back to work. 
The shortstop oh. takes the ball. Bueno. The wind and the pitch. That's the ball. Backdoor breaking ball just missed right there. And boy, umpire didn't give him the oh, call. I bet you if he throws it again, hitter knows he's going to have to swing it. And yeah, the righty deals. Fouls one away and now three and two. The pitch. Good job to fight that one off. The wide to kick the pitch. And foul ball. Now well, he's desperately looking for that swing and miss. He's going to have to just change speeds a little bit, try to move it around, create just a little bit of illusion at the end. Outside, four, four. and that Take is ball bait. four. It wasn't easy, but he earned that walk after a long at bat. It's tough after falling behind a hitter, two balls and no strikes, but now at least he gets a fresh start against a new batter, but he needs to get back into the strike zone and start pitching with conviction. Hammer down the line. Could be extra bases. Henderson, round second on his way to third. Bro comes in, runner stop, second and third, nobody out. Oh, that started and ended pretty quickly. No messing around right there. Ripped that one down the line and kept it fair. And even when you hit it that far out front, you still have to keep your hands tight to your body so you don't hook around that baseball and put it in foul territory. And that right there was perfect. And next for the Orioles, Ryan Mountcastle. That one outside, and that's ball one. A swing and a miss, and that's strike one. One one. And a count one and two. Right hander kicks deals. That smash towards center. Squeezes it. Here comes the runner from third. He'll score on the sack fly, and they cut the lead to two. Sometimes that can be a little tough to score on. It was hit so hard that getting back to the bag to tag takes a little bit of time by the time that outfielder catches it, but a really good job of getting that run in from third. Anthony Santander, the next to hit for the Orioles. That's inside. That's the Red Sox with some bullpen action. Nick Pavetta up and loosening in the pen. Winkowski, a hard throwing right hander, up as well. He caught it behind his back, and they get the out. Now that. And into the box for Baltimore, Jordan Westberg. Turned on, but foul wide of third. With the tying run at the plate, and we're the top half of the sixth. Now a blooper back behind Shore. Makes the grab, and that'll end the inning. So a run on one hit, no errors, and a man left. 9 1 and 2 scheduled to hit in the home half of the sixth. It's the Red Sox three and the Orioles one. And welcome back to the ballpark. Bottom of the sixth inning. Here's a speed threat David Hamilton. The right hander back to work. And that is cut on and missed. It's 0-1. Wow, no fair right there. I mean, that slider didn't move till the very last moment. Incredibly difficult to pick that up. Just kind of have to tip your cap on that pitch. High fly ball near the pole. That one is foul.
Righty delivers. Fights that one away, and the count remains 0 and 2. Righty to the plate. That misses the zone, and it's 1 and 2. Tough take right there. He swings at that more often than not. And here it comes. Bows it off, still one and two. That one to first, and that's just foul. Kicks and fires. Swings through it, and that's a strikeout. Oh, there's a small sigh of relief right there. I mean, just to keep that speed off the base pass, it's okay. not just the pitcher. It's other guys that no, have to think about either. it from your You're infielders, right. have to think about that runner right. potentially stealing, but also be in position to make a play. As an outfielder, you're thinking about a base hit to the outfield. I got to get to it quickly to try right. to keep this guy from taking an extra base. So I think everyone just a little more relaxed that he didn't reach base. Pitch misses nope. oh. outside. And the count is one and one. One and one. <laughs> and that's in there at the knees for a strike. Base is empty one away here in the bottom of the sixth. Let's go, Red Sox. Popped up. Henderson makes the catch. Two away now. Now batting, third baseman, Raphael. Two outs, Devers. base is empty. Here's Rafael Devers. He has, as they like to say, let me guess, Boog, light tower power? That's right. And first offering is fouled off. Bounce to the left side. Westberg. Fires across the diamond. And Devers is set down. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. Red Sox go down quietly as the lead remains 3-1. So they turn things over to the righty, Nick Pavetta. And he's got a big time breaking ball to contend with. Uh, hitters going to have to pick it up early if they're going to have any chance. Now the left fielder, Austin Hayes. And a pitch. Fastball in for a strike, and it's 0-1. Pitching has been pretty dominant in this one, but you got to be careful. Not working with too big a lead. They could get right back in this ball game if you're not careful. And there's a breaking ball that drops in there. Quickly in an 0-2 hole, you're going to have to give something up here in terms of power if you want to put the ball in play with any authority. Swings and misses at the breaking ball in the dirt. And it beats him for the first out after the drop third strike. A big first out here in the seventh via the punch out. Yeah, it just does so much to change the outlook of an important inning like this. When you got the leadoff hitter so critical in setting the table when you got a tight game like this. So a strikeout really puts them on their heels. Mullins in the box for the third time today as he takes that one off the plate. And a foul ball. One down, base is empty. Swing it a foul straight back. Right handed reliever. And Here another ball. The Red Sox holding on to a two-run lead here at the top half of inning number seven.
The 2 2 on the way. Struck him out swinging. Had him out front for strike three. Chance to strike out the side now. You talk about the benefits, the advantages of relievers who can come in and get the swing and miss, whether it's inherited runners or maybe a little jam that they get into themselves. Knowing that they can miss the bat, tell you what, that's huge and can change the ballgame. McCann lays off down low as he digs in for the third time. Well, as good as things can be, it can be a tough day at the office, even for the skippers. Seeing the offense just sputter, not able to get anything going. Two down, nobody on. Swings right through that one for strike two. One and two, count. Swing and a ball lined out towards center. Durant makes the catch. And that is that. Nothing doing for the offense that time. Seventh inning stretch time. It's the Red Sox three and the Orioles one. Back here in Boston. And yeah, the batter now, well, the Tyler O'Neill. The designated hitter, Tyler O'Neill. The pitch. That one's in there. Strike one. Hit in the air, right field. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And there's one down. The first baseman, Tristan. Tristan Casas up next for the Red Sox. And it's fouled away. One out, base is empty. That's off That's the mark. Ball. And the count even one and one. Oh you know, this is a good time to step out of the box, take a deep breath, reset. A couple of change ups. Probably won't see another one here. Left hand batter waits. Foul ball still, a one and two count. miss struck him out he's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field he was out in front there just needs to let the ball travel a little more and his timing will be back on track good pitch for the strikeout Masataka Yoshida up next for the Red Sox and first offering is fouled off Two down, nobody on. Here, the bottom of the seventh. And yeah, that's, that's outside, ball. and it's one and one. One and one. And a pitch. Wouldn't ball. chase that time. Two and one. Next right. offering is in for a strike. Two outs. This one popped up. Westberg under it. And makes the play, and that's out number three. Down in order go the Red Sox, but they still lead it 3-1. Righty reliever out of the pen, Chris Martin. He last pitched two days ago. And here is Jorge Mateo. The second baseman, Jorge Mateo. The pitch. Foul back our way, and that's out of play. Here comes a pitch. 
And that one fouled off. And a pitch. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. Ugly cut on the slider for strike three. That was a well executed slider away for the strikeout right there. First two pitches filled up the zone and got him ahead 0 2 in the count. And at that point, you can start expanding the zone as a pitcher. He made him chase and got the quick strikeout. Digging in, Gunnar Henderson. Not ball, even no close strike. there. Ball one. Martin, in his seventh season, he features a four seam fastball, a cutter, a splitter, a sinker, and he works in a slider. And the pitch. Top right. of the zone for a strike. And the count one and one. Hit on the ground to the foul right ball. side. And it goes just foul. The Orioles trailing by two. And we're in the top of the eighth. And they'll do it again. Kicks and deals. Fights that one away. Still one and two. Right side, hard hit. Casas takes it himself. Two up, two down here in the top of the eighth. The batter, the designated hitter, Adley Rutschman. Now the number two hitter, Adley Rutschman. Hit hard on the ground to short. Jump throw across his body. And the Orioles set down in order. Pure athleticism on that one. In the air, legs split a bit, and fires across the diamond. He's going to get a lot of high fives in the dugout. Back now, new pitcher on the mound as we roll into the bottom of the eighth, Dylan Tate. They know that he can get a right-hander out, but he's in position to face a couple of lefties this inning. Now it's the second Leading baseman, off. one for Red three. Thomas. The second baseman, Edmanuel. And he deals. Yes. That he one caught. finds the zone, going one. And that's oh. in the dirt. Here's a one one. Foul ball there. One two now out to short Henderson the throw to first leadoff man is out here in the eighth good slider inside right there batter fighting to get there just rolled over it got the ground ball and next for the Red Sox will you Abreu. That's hard hit on the line. And a superb diving catch. That diving catch right there is the kind of play that just that fires up the team, three. whether it's to make more three. great defensive plays or to get back in the dugout and swing the sticks. Here's Reese McGuire. 0 for 3 with two strikeouts and a flyout. Inside corner for a strike. Two down, nobody on. And that one fouled off. And 
down on strikes and a nice inning of work there as he sets him down one two three nothing doing for Boston and the score stays three to one. We're back, and on the mound is the closer, Fabio Castro. A chance at his first save of the year. So digging in, Ryan Mountcastle. Picked up an RBI in his last at bat. Still their only run of the game so far. Slapped foul. The 0 1. And a strike. No ball, two strikes. Next ball. offering down low and in the dirt. One ball, two strikes. The pitch. Ball. He's trying to stay down in the zone, but the hitter just will not chase. Now back in a 2-2 count, he's going to have to go to something else to get him out. Next one the in the dirt. Countful. Up the middle. On the run. Throw to first. On target. He got him. Nice play. Up next to the The right fielder. Anthony. He's two outs Santander. away. Digging in is the switch inning outfielder, Anthony Santander. And a foul ball. The Orioles down by a pair here at the top of the ninth. Good that eye in that spot. Ball. And oh. another ball. Well, you get to this part of the Two order. Balls, one strike. Yeah, there's some pop there, but more likely there are some base hits. So very important to be patient. Let the pitcher walk you, if he will. Next Three offering is downstairs. Swing and a foul over the screen and back out of play. Three two. And he walked him. Ball four. Take your base. They're not ready to go home quite yet. Now batting. Third base. So next to hit for Baltimore. Jordan Westberg. It's interesting he plays kind of a, a power spot defensively, but runs pretty well. So when you're looking at that position, you're not expecting someone that has maybe above average speed, but he does. The tying run at the plate. On the ground. Boots it. And no shot to get him at first. There's two aboard. Now that the left field. Austin. Making a move at second base. On the run for Baltimore. Colton Kowser. Austin Hayes. The next to hit for the Orioles. This one chopped on the ground, but foul. Runners at first and second with one gone. So the tying run at second. Swings and this one's flare and it falls. Runner around third on his way to the plate. Just a huge at bat right there. Looped that one in there for the knob. Definitely got that pitch on the outside of the cap a little bit, but he made it work for him. Now a huge at bat in this game coming up. Cedric Mullins, the next to hit for the Orioles. 
That one missed up. inside. And that is ball one. Well, they're applying pressure, quality at bats, quality swings right now. And see this offense doing it, one man to the next, showing a lot of fight right now. And they're making it difficult for the back end of this bullpen to close out this game. Swing and a high fly ball down the left field line, but hooking foul. And now wow. two and one. He's getting a little frustrated out great. there on the mound, getting hit around a little bit. Let's see if he can settle himself down. Swings and misses. And the count is two and two. Sometimes being lucky is a swing and miss. If he makes contact with that pitch, probably hits into a double play. And the righty deals. Grounder might be two. And that chance handled. Fires to second for one. Not in time at first. It's a fielder's choice. Well, there's a lot riding on that at bat right there. Nice job of the pitcher to bear down, make the pitch, get the ground ball. Excellent piece of work. So they turn to the lefty in this spot, Joely Rodriguez. And I can't imagine any save is an easy one. You're holding a small lead on the scoreboard, and you know those hitters are going to give you the best at bats they can. So it's always high stress. Let's see what he's got here to try and close it out. Orioles down to their final out. Now the Orioles catcher, James McCann, trying to deliver as the hero. Well hit the other way. That one going back and foul. This ball's chopped on the ground. Steps on the bag himself. Ball game. The ball for his first career save deserves to be on display at his house. I mean, it's kind of like when a restaurant frames its first dollar bill somewhere on a wall. You just can't forget your first save. 3 2 the final score. They hang on to win it by a run for Chris Singleton and our entire crew here at MLB The Show. Thanks for stopping by. I'm John Chomby. Talk to you soon.